Thanks for the introduction. So yeah, I'm Kazuhiko Minamatsu from NEC Corporation, and uh, this is a joint work uh, with Tetsu Iwata from Nagoya University, and Toma Peran from NTU, and Yannick Suran from ANSI. So let me start with the very basic things, the MAC function. Uh, this is a symmetric key uh, crypto for tampering detection, and uh, uh, the main component is a MAC function, taking the key here, and uh, oh, Takes the key here and the message, which has the variable length, and to produce the tag of the fixed length. So in the typical usage scenario, RS sends a computer, RS computer tag as an output of the MAC function, taking key and M here, and send the, the pair of the MAC message and the tag to the Bob. And Bob checks if this pair is correct or not or by computing the tag locally, and if it, the received tag is compliant with the sent tag here. And it is known that if MAC function, this is a, a variable input length pseudo random function, uh, this MAC protocol is secure. So the main component of our construction is a tweakable block cipher, TBC, which is an extension of the ordinary block cipher introduced by Risk of et al. in 2002. And, uh, a difference from the ordinary block cipher is that uh, there is an additional input called the tweak, which is a public, which can be public, and the pair of the key and the tweak specify the permutation set over the message space. In this talk, I assume that the uh, message is of n bits and the tweak is always t bit, but here we also implicitly assume that there's an additional small tweak uh, represented as a small positive integer i. Uh, mainly used for the domain separation. I mean, the, 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 uh, we need to support, inter, uh, produce some independent instance of the TBC. And the right has uh, here this expression for when necessary. So how to build a TBC? So there are some well-known block cipher modes, such as uh, LLW and the XEX. Um, they are ultimately efficient because it only requires one block cipher call to uh, perform one TBC encryption. But security is also up to the best bound of the, with respect to the block length. Therefore, the, if the AES used only a data complexity of the 2 to the 64 attack, is, uh, uh, we can break uh, with this complexity. <coughs> there are some uh, modes that achieve the stronger security guarantee, meaning the beyond the burst bound security, is possible with some modes, but uh, they are not really efficient. Uh, at, at least, uh, it's not uh, efficient, uh, as efficient as uh, XE or LLW. So the other direction is to uh, design it from scratch. So starting it from the hasty padding price cipher uh, designed by Schreppel in 1998, there are many tweakable, uh, dedicated tweakable block ciphers. The three fish in scaling hash function, and uh, there are the uh, multiple instances of the TBC designed for as a like, main component in the CISA submissions. And uh, more recent ones, the, the Skinny and the Kalma. So, so for the security notion of TBC, it is uh, indistinguishability from the set of independent uniform random permutation indexed by tweak, which we, I also call the Tweakable uniform random permutation, TULP, denoted by tilde P. And uh, if the adversary here cannot uh, distinguish the, these two words, even if the uh, chosen ciphertext attack, uh, where the tweak is also chosen, it is called the TSPRP. And if uh, it is uh, difficult to distinguish these two words, the underlying TBC is called the TPRP. Okay, so let me show the several uh, constructions for MAC using TBC. The first one is the PMAC1, introduced by Logaway in the proof of the PMAC. The scheme is here. As, it, as you can see, the, this is free parallelizable except the, except the final one. But the security is also up to the burst bound with respect to the block size again. So the, the maximum advantage of the PMAC1 from the uh, distinguishing it from the pseudo-random function 
is uh, up to the this term, where the sigma denotes the maximum number of uh, total query blocks. So therefore, this has the half of n bit security. The another one is uh, PMAC TBC 1K introduced by Naito in 2015, which is mostly similar, uh, yeah, quite similar to the PMAC one, but uh, employs a different chaining scheme, having the two n bit chaining scheme here. So we need uh, this shows the message hashing part of the PMAC TBC 1K, and uh, there's another finalization step, which is uh, essentially a two n bit input pseudo random function built from the TBC. A unique feature of this scheme is it has a beyond burst bound security. That is, uh, it improves the security of PMAC to n bits while, the keep it, while keeping the same computation cost as PMAC 1. Okay. But uh, these TBC based schemes are not optimally efficient because they process n bit input power 1 TBC core. So the internal, yes. In these schemes, the uh, internal tweaker block cipher is invoked like this one. However, that this TB tweak so does not process message. Just the, it is reserved for uh, computing for the block index. So the simple question is here is how to build an optimal efficient to be best Mac. So. In this talk, I would like to propose uh, two, propo uh, show two proposals. The, the first one, ZMAC, uh, yeah, and the, the second one is ZAE. ZMAC is the first uh, optimally efficient TBC based MAC, namely, the, it processes the n plus t bit input for one TBC call. And it is also parallel and has a beyond burst bound security. The most specifically, the security, uh, bit security is this form, minimum of n and half of n plus t bit. That is, uh, if the t tweak length is not more than n, it has the n bit security. And the ZAE is a uh, byproduct of the ZMAC, which is an application of the ZMAC to the deterministic authenticated encryption, introduced by, introduced by Rogaway and Shrimpton in 2006. And it has a better security and a secu a better efficiency and security than SCT mode of operation presented at the Crypto 2016. And both are using TBC as a sole primitive, so there are no other components like the field large field variable multiplication, and uh, they are provably secure if TBC is a TPRP. So. Let me explain the structure of ZMAC. Uh, this is a simple composition of the message hashing and finalization, where the message hashing is called Z hash, and the finalization is called Z thing. And the output of the Z hash is always n plus t bits, and the Z thing's output is two n bits here. Uh, and if we, we need a uh, short output, yet we can simply uh, cut the output, final output of the Z thing. And we provide a unified specification for any t. I mean, the t can be equal to the n or larger than or smaller than n. Okay, and uh, this talk will focus on z hash because this is the most innovative part of z mac. So, when designing the z hash, the first observation is that to, to achieve the optimal efficiency, we somehow need to extend the tweak, speed, tweak space of the underlying tweakable block cipher because otherwise there's no way to incorporate the information of the block index inside the, this computational hash function. Uh, yes. And this can be done by a tweak extension scheme called the XTX, which was introduced by Iwata and myself in 2015. And uh, this is an extension of LLW and XEX. So this is the XTX. So you can see the G here, which shows the global tweak, which has a space larger than 2 to the T. And there's a key function, HL, uh, takes G and outputs the N plus T bit output here. The first N bit output is used as a mask to the uh, input and output of the underlying TBC. 
And the second TV, remaining TV output C is used for the tweak for the internal TVC. And this XDX is probably secure if H has the property called the uh, Epsilon partial AXU, PAXU, short. short. And the uh, definition is here, which shows that the, only the first end bit part is required to uh, be differentially uniform. And the, the remaining T bit part has a small, should have a small collision probability. Okay. And in your case, the, this global G, tweak G, consists of the two parts. The first part is the message uh, information of T bits. And the second one is the block index represented by a positive integer. And of course, block in index is a counter because we, as we receive the first block and the second block and so on. So then the, with this observation, the XTX can be instantiated by using the doubling trick as then provided by and popularized by XTX and optimized by cutting the outer mask to Y here because we do not uh, need a decryption in the MAC computation. So the resulting scheme, tweak extension scheme, which we call the XT, uh, is using the HL defined uh, by this formula using the two n bit keys, L, L and LR. So here you can see that 2 to the i minus 1 times LL and 2 to the i minus 1 times LR, which they are uh, a successful, successive application of the field doubling, namely the uh, multiplication by 2 over the field of, uh, of G2 to the N for I times, uh, I minus one times here. And uh, if the, we need a two to the I times X, the, its computation is easy by caching the, the value, uh, previous value of the two to the I minus one times the X as was done in XEX. And uh, for defining a unified specification, we also introduced the uh, variant of the X or operation, X or T here, which is just a uh, simple X or operation, but the first argument is chopped or padded before uh, taking sum when T is not equal to N. So the scheme is here. And uh, we can show that uh, this XT uh, is also a secure tweakable block cipher. If the underlying tweakable block cipher is also a secure tweakable block cipher of the T of T bit tweak. Uh, more formally, if the underlying TBC is a perfect, and if H is a epsilon P A X U, then the security advantage is uh, bounded by this quantity Q squared o times E over two. And we observe that our H function is one over two to the n plus minimum of n T P A X U. So combining these uh, two facts we get uh, this security bound, which shows that uh, essentially XT has a minimum of n, n plus uh, half of n plus T bit security, which is a beyond the bursty bound security if T is a positive integer. So then the, after we get the uh, XT extension, it's easy to apply the PMAC like single chaining hashing scheme like this one. So it, Message is divided into n plus t bit blocks and, uh, and uh, given to the TBC uh, with the block index. And we get the hashing value, uh, chaining value as an XOR of the old output, XOR of the outputs of the TXT. So this is apparently optimally efficient, but the security is only up to the bus bound because we can easily detect a collision here the collision of the XT outputs using the two to the half of N queries fixing the second block and so on, and only changing the first block, first block here. So we naturally need a larger chaining value, but uh, if we naively used a uh, two n-bit chaining scheme adapted by Naito and Yasuda, uh, the scheme would uh, look like this one, but uh, this also doesn't work. Because we can still detect the collision here, no matter how, the, how large is the changing scheme is. OK. 
Okay. So the key observation here is to avoid these collision attacks. So we, all, we need a beyond birthday bound security. We need to avoid these attacks. The process of the each message blocks, you know, uh, shown by the, this box, must be a permutation. So, and we also need uh, some other yeah, technical conditions, but uh, this is the uh, yeah, anyway, most important observation. And uh, we found that uh, this X, uh, face like round of the one round permutation using the yeah, only one XT call inside the box works, actually works. The resulting scheme, which uh, I showed, uh, I wrote as the Z hash in the yeah, mass board fonts, has uh, good uh, collision probability. Namely, it is uh, epsilon almost universal for epsilon uh, equal to the 4 over 2 to the n plus minimum of nt. So it has a beyond burst bound collision probability. So based on these observations, the Fruji hash is here. So as you can see, that each message is divided into n plus t bit blocks. And uh, as you can see here, that this is a xt, tweak extension using the, this tilde E as an underlying TBC. And this shows the, yeah, one round face like permutation. And uh, here is a larger chaining, uh, chaining scheme of having N plus T bit. Okay. And uh, so this is the G hash. So, and we need to finalize this value uh, you, to produce the MAC tag. And the GP works. Uh, just simply encrypt the U and V, where U, did not, U and V denote the final output of the Z hash here. U is N bit and V is T bit. And yeah, Z hash encrypt U with a tweak V twice to produce each N bit output. So the scheme is here. And this peer, uh, peer of security of Z thing is easily proved by uh, previous works on the because this is essentially a sum of random perm two random permutations. Using a, a very recent result by Dietor, which is equipped uh, uh, this year, GFIN uh, is proved to have the n bit security. The security bound is, this, is shown here. So, combining all lemmas, the here is the security bound of the GMAC. And this shows that the GMAC is actually a minimum of n plus, n and n plus, half of n plus t bit secure, secure. Okay, so in the remaining, I would like to describe uh, ZA, deterministic authenticated encryption. So as Arthur already described, the ZAE is a cross of authenticated encryption, uh, has some uh, yeah, strong security features under normal AE. So it's guaranteed the standard NAS-based AE security when the associated data contains a distinct NAS at the encryption. But even if NAS is repeated or there is even no NAS, the best possible DAE security is guaranteed. So only the repetition of the plain text is leaked. And from this feature, it is also called a misuse resistant AE. So for building the uh, DAE, uh, as uh, following the previous works, we follow the generic SIB construction, which requires the PRF taking the associated data and the text M to produce the tag here. And uh, the other, as an, uh, we also need a random IV based encryption taking the tag as an IV to perform the encryption. And the scheme is here. The we instantiate the PRF by ZMAC with the input encoding for the vector input of A and M, associated data and message. And the IV based encryption is instantiated by a variant of the um, uh, encryption mode called IVCPRT introduced by Peran and Sura in 2016. The scheme is some, like this one. And uh, this secu uh, the security proof of the ZA is uh, uh, easy to get from the previous security bound of the ZMAC and the SIV and IVCPRT. The bound is here, which is this. Uh, better than SCT mode of operation, which has a half of n-bit DAE security. 
So for example, the DAE with uh, two equal angles equal to the N has uh, N bit DAE security. Okay, for the efficiency of ZAE, so I mean, the how many input bits can be processed by one YTBC core inside ZAE is uh, n times n plus t divided by 2n plus t. So, some looks strange, but uh, this is because the uh, IBCTRT mode of operation processes n bit input for one, one TBC core. And this figure is always better than SCT, using, uh, whose exchange is half of n bits because this uh, SCT uses the PMAC1 for MAC function. For example, the, the exchange of ZAE is uh, 2n over 3 bits for uh, fan t equals to the n, and fan t equals to the 2n, it is 4n over 3. So we also instantiate uh, ZMAC and ZAE using a dedicated existing TBC, and we choose the deoxys BC and skinny Right, the deoxys BC is a TBC in the CEDA candidate, deoxys, which is essentially AS best, and the ASNA can be used to have a very fast implementation uh, on the modern Intel and AMD platforms. And uh, the skinny is a uh, lightweight variant of the 64 or 128 bit block TBC introduced at Crypto last year. And we evaluated the TBC performance and the random tweaks uh, and uh, estimated the performance of the ZMAC and ZAE with this uh, performance evaluation of the underlying TBC. For example, on Intel Skylake using ASNI, the OxyBC 250 ZMAC runs at 1.61, and the uh, ZAE runs at 1.48 cycle per byte, and it shows some 20 to 30% gain from the MAC or DA mode using the same TBC. So see the paper for more details. So performance question, I would like to skip this one. So the concluding remarks, in this talk we propose the ZMAC and ZA are highly secure and fast DA and MAC and DA based on TBC. And this shows the power of the XEX-like masking. We already see it in the many block cipher modes like the PMAC and the OCB, but ZMAC shows it is also powerful in TBC modes. So as on the future topics, we would like to uh, consider other applications such as the uh, NAS-based AE and uh, even stronger security, achieving even stronger security than bit is also an interesting direction. Okay, that's it. Thanks for attention.